So something that I hear a lot is people sort of saying, oh, you know, I've had back pain for ages and uh, I need surgery because, um, you know, I have this really bad thing and I've tried physio and I've tried all the conservative management and like, you know, it's not going to work. I'm in chronic back pain. And I, I always think I get funny when I hear it because the evidence for, for surgery for back pain is low. Like it's really low. Um, in terms of like a spinal stabilization, there isn't any evidence that it's actually beneficial at all. There are some back surgeries that are necessary if you have like emergency situation where nerve is getting cut off. And I just read a study as well about a nerve ablation, which is something that happens all the time in Australia, um, where they kind of try and kill off your nerves for back pain also does nothing. And this is kind of proof that trying to address purely or just the physical, you know, oh, my back hurts. If I kill the nerve off, it won't hurt. It doesn't work. So neither does, oh, if, you know, if I stabilize and have this surgery, it'll get rid of the pain. Well, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't work. So the idea that oh, I have something that's worse than what physio can manage, um, I need surgery. It's flawed in its outset because all well, the surgeries don't have good evidence. Like they don't actually do anything. Um, except that when you have a surgery, you have to have your spine kind of cut into and operated on. So it has some pretty big risks there. So the reason that I think physio fails is that it's not, it's sort of chronically underloaded. Like we are not challenging our patients enough sometimes. And I was guilty of this. So, you know, you stand at physio, you go to the physio, you have back pain, they do some mobilizations, they tape it, they give you these sort of exercises to do. Of course, it gets better in about two weeks. Then you start gradually increasing the intensity of what they're doing, gradually build them back to sort of, you know, whatever they were doing. And, you know, that's it. Um, and that works for so many people because back pain is most likely going to get better anyway. But there is this little group of people where it's a little bit more complicated than that and it's not going to work so easily. And I'm not going to go into the chronic pain side of it because that's different and that's a big issue as well where it's not actually mechanical. But let's say it is mechanical, meaning like there's this physical kind of reason. Often we are not loading them enough. We're not challenging them enough. And... I just think back, I had this lady who sort of every time her back kind of went on her, um, every time she like did burpees or like she bent forward into her car holding her child or whatever, it would periodically happen. And I remember we were doing Pilates, we were doing strength training, strength training. Me five years ago in physio practice, strength training was sort of very basic stuff. Um, and I remember when it happened again, I was like, oh my God, but we're doing everything. And like me and her were sort of at a loss, like, oh. and I think back now and I'm like, yeah, Francis, of course, because you didn't do anything to challenge that position for her. You, you know, and I do remember thinking at the time, like, how is her back going to get stronger? Like I hadn't made that link. Like how is her back going to get stronger when we're just doing these sort of kind of very light movements? And how is she going to be able to tolerate doing a burpee or forward flexion or whatever when we're not, we never practiced that movement. Now it's different, you know, you really have to challenge people and get them. I, I actually kind of really think that everyone should be able to do a loaded hip hinge, like a deadlift movement. If they have back pain, they should be able to sort of do that reliably without it hurting. And absolute end stage, um, they should be able to kind of curve their back while bending forward to pick something up and it's heavy and it not matter. I kind of think in order to make someone resilient, like you do need to progress them to that point. And I never did that. And like I'd been a physio, you know, I only started really thinking like that after about seven years. And that is where I think we're letting people down. Like we chronically underload them. We do pain management stuff at the start. So we reduce their pain by doing like a massage or a needling or, you know, and their pain goes and then they stop coming. And so we're like, yeah, we're done. And then that person re-hurts themselves like at week four. And then, you know, they're like, oh my God, like, you know, I already did physio and it didn't work. And it's like, oh, wow, like, we didn't do, any they didn't do anything. <laughs> so... I am doing this video to kind of say, hey, look, like if you feel like you've tried everything and it didn't work, like maybe you haven't, honestly, there is always an answer. And I feel like if you work with a clinician, like a physio that you trust and you get on well with, like that is a huge step because together you can problem solve through it. Like as a patient in pain, it is almost impossible to know what to do. But if you get a therapist you can trust and form an alliance with, you can sort it out and you'll figure it out. Um, it is so rare that someone's prognosis is literally just like my back's stuffed and that's it. Like that's not how it is. So I hope someone hears this and feels a little bit hopeful that there is another option.